Hello and welcome to www.luxurytolast.com. Today we're talking watch collecting and we're talking the genre of thin dress watches. And uh, in my opinion, I don't think there's any other brand which excelled in the the um, genre of the thin dress watch as much as Vacheron Constantine. And uh, I mean, Patek Philippe, it certainly had a uh, it's it's had a couple of models even up until recent times it's had some um, very thin dress watches and um, other brands have also had very thin models like Audemars Piaget, um, Breguet, uh, many 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 brands. Now the the question is this: with the genre itself there, why why was it so well? In the in watchmaking technology, obviously a watch is a is a thing with many moving mechanical parts. The the skill to make something as small as possible. This is before the the microchip and things like that. There was to make it as small and as delicate as possible, and to when I say delicate, to reduce the size so it could fit into a smaller space as possible while still being quite durable because you've got to remember a wristwatch itself takes a pounding it needs to be accurate it needs to last and uh, Audemars Piaget it's quite funny because they had some very thin dress watches up until the 1980s and if you look at the range now with the the Audemars Piaget Royal Oak offshore chrono which is a monster of a watch it's amazing to believe that Audemars Piaget actually had some very thin dress watches and uh, that just shows you how consumer driven the Swiss watch industry is now I'm not saying it's a bad thing it's just a economic reality of the times and Audemars Piaget it's just amazing that they they um, they had such a thin thin watch in their range compared to the monsters they're producing now but I, I, I would say look Vacheron Constantine one of the oldest houses for making watches Vacheron's got a, a proud history of having over 250 years of continual production it's not just a brand that's been re um, invigorated from for, for, from the uh, from the ground this is a brand that has existed that long and and that that's quite an amazing feat and Vacheron themselves there the 1950s 1960s th this is when uh, America was was doing extremely well economically it's it's not long after World War two where Europe was uh, certainly decimated and England was had still had rationing in a lot of ways and so Vacheron released its it's some of its finest dress watches and um, they've used movements like the K1001 the K1003 type movement K1002 movement those those type of movements there and and the aim was to make the watch as thin as possible and uh, I, I was looking around I've got a beautiful Patek Philippe Calatrava dress watch white gold but I was sort of thinking to myself you know the watch is called a Grand Tourley. I said, you know, maybe I really want a 1950s, 1960s ultra thin dress watch. And and I, I started thinking, who makes, what what brand is renowned for that? And um, that 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 drove me to the um, the Vacheron and Concertine house. And um, you certainly can understand why they they've had a very long history in watchmaking. And the ultra thin watches themselves, their Vacheron is is renowned for. And uh, my my Vacheron, I've got a Vacheron 6405. And uh, there's some other Vacherons you can see here in this clip here. Um, I'm showing. These are 1960s type watches, and um, they they were quite expensive. My Vacheron 6405 in 1967, which was the first year that my dad entered the the workforce as a bank teller. Um, my Vacheron was $850. His yearly wage at the time was just over $2,000 a year. So you're looking at sort of half a year's salary. Uh, and uh, that's a lot of money. And um, 
the the peak you look at it and you can see why it's so expensive it's 18 karat gold it's got a coin edging bezel it's got a magnificent geneva seal movement it's a beautiful beautiful watch and the the that genre of watch the ultra thin dress watch itself there it's sort of in the 1950s and 1960s the times were not as casual as today suits were a lot more worn uh, ties were expected for a lot of jobs and uh, we've seemed to have have made the workforce a lot more casual and it's quite funny you see people now with in boardrooms in suits with a Rolex Submariner or Rolex Sea Dweller on their wrist huge dinner plate specials where the dress watch is what should really be worn in that environment the thin dress watch and um, look the, the interesting thing, Vacher and Constantine, they they are a very renowned house, but they they've kind of um, they're a highly respected firm, but they were slow to change. And when I say change, I mean move to the larger sizes. And uh, you got to remember, in year 2000, the Patek 3919, which is the 33 millimeter Patek Calatrava, which is sort of synonymous with Patek Philippe it was still 33 mils so the larger sizes uh, are only a very recent occurrence Patek in the 40s had a lot of men's dress watches which were 31 millimeters across so that's quite a small watch by modern standards and uh, this Vacheron um, the, the Vacheron that I've got is 33 millimeters and it's it's a um, it's a very thin Vacheron beautiful legs on it and um, <clears throat> I think it does that genre of ultra thin 18 karat dress watches perfectly it follows all the things that I think a good dress watch should have a dress watch should be made of a precious metal in my case it's yellow gold it should be thin which the the Vacheron invented that genre it must, needs to be on a leather strap it needs to be uh, it can have like a a seconds. It's mine's got a sub seconds, but it needs to be not a complicated, just a very discreet. Because with a dress watch, discretion is the the key ingredient, and that's the the thing about a dress watch. It's very discreet and relaxed, and I don't think it gets any better than a Vacher and Constantine. And um, the interesting thing is, I mean look times have certainly changed these companies are market driven the market forces control a lot of these these products Vacheron has actually now they've got a range of watches called the Vacheron Patrimony and uh, the Patrimony dress watch mechanical it's actually a 40 millimeter across watch now and um, I don't know if, if I feel feel um, I mean it's a beautiful looking modern uh, watch with a, a a vintage feel to it, but the I think in some ways there it's kind of sad that the, all the watches have gotten so big like that. They do look beautiful. I I agree. I mean I've got modern eyes. I I I I understand exactly where where people are coming from there. But uh, I, I mean look, if you want a a proper interpretation of 50s, 60s ultra thin watches, I think Vacheron is the key key brand there and the other thing about Vacheron is that these watches yes they were ultra expensive when they were new they really are quite a good bargain to buy on the second hand market and uh, that's partly because they've lost flavor the smaller size watches are um, they are not retaining the value as the bigger watches and it's quite interesting because my Vacheron in the 60s would have been double the price of a Rolex Submariner when it was new. However, now it's a fraction of the price of a, a vintage Submariner. And uh, that just shows you how fashion and times change. The other interesting thing is with the, the Vacheron pieces there, is it's not just Vacheron who had smaller pieces. If you look back to the Rolex bubble back, it's sort of a 31 mil size watch and um, when the the oyster range came out it went slightly bigger and you look at the the Rolex so the the Rolex had the um, like you look at the Rolex date just 1601 the 16013 the 16233 which is the two-tone date just series 
and it was 36 mil they've now released Datejust 2 which is a, a bigger size case again and uh, that that's these are all these companies are all consumer driven and um, I I still think there's a lot of for everything you gain you lose something and uh, I think 60s 50s 60s uh, dress watches Fasher and Constantine is the, is is the name that um, I think had that genre perfectly covered. I think in time the Vacheron on pieces um, will will certainly climb in value. But if you're looking for a great dress watch with a a beautiful um, piece of history in watchmaking, I think a Vacheron ultra thin watch you certainly can't get better than that. I hope you've enjoyed this clip. Please come to my free information website www.luxurytolast.com. Thank you.